Good morning, True Friendship Church. I am Lady C. It is truly an honor and a blessing to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. Whatever you're doing, stop right now and just give God a great big hand clap of praise because he is truly worthy to be praised. Here at True Friendship Church, our motto is transform the world through the word of God one life at a time. We have two churches and we are one church in two locations, Lincolnton, Georgia and in Elberton, Georgia. So if you're looking at us on Facebook right now, go ahead and share this video. And when you share the video, tag someone in it to let them know that True Friendship Church is live right now. After the video, please go to YouTube and subscribe to our YouTube page so you can see all of our uploads. And then don't forget to follow us on Instagram. On Instagram, we do daily posts and you don't want to miss those. So please, let's just bring our hearts and minds into praise and worship. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ever ask, think, or imagine. Hallelujah. Exceedingly above
is in verse number three. The centerpiece of Psalms 1 is verse number three, and it says, He shall be like a tree. He shall be like a tree. He shall be like a tree. It is comparing a righteous person to a tree. There are several types of trees. An oak tree, pine tree, whipping willow tree, pecan tree, just to name a few. And we see how large certain trees are. However, every tree begins as a small seed. Every tree begins as a small seed. And it grows into a large tree. tree. Anything that produces begins as a seed. The earth itself produced, but it began as a seed. The seed was God's word. When God spoke the word, let there be, and there was, the moment God spoke that word, there was a seed, seed, and the earth developed, and the earth grew, not just subtly, but the Bible let us know that it grew over a period of six days. I myself produced spiritual fruit, but I began as a seed, a seed from my biological father. An apple tree produced, but it began as a seed. I want you to notice anything large, anything that produced, anything that develops, Anything worthwhile begins small. Anything worth having begins as a small seed. No wonder Zechariah chapter number 4, verse number 10, New Living Translation says, Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. Uh, do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices. He rejoiced to see the work begin. He rejoiced to see seeing the small work. I want to let somebody know, don't despise your small seed. No matter what type of seed you have, no matter what the case may be, you may think it's nothing. You may think you're not going nowhere, but I want to you this morning, do not despise your small seed. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and type that in a comment box. Do not despise your small seed. And I don't believe some people fully understand that we are the seed of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham, God probably told you to leave your native land. Mm -hmm. Leave your family. Leave all of your kin people and go to a land that he, referring to God, will show you, Abraham. You may think that it's small, but Abraham, what you're getting ready to do, you're getting ready to change a generation. You're getting ready to be a father of many nations. You, if you obey this small seed, if you begin to work in this small seed, you just won't change your life, Abraham, but you'll change your children's children's life. And when you're dead and gone because you did not despise this small seed, you will just change the whole trajectory of the nation. Do not despise your small seed. Abraham, I know it may seem small to you, 
But Abraham, you're going to change a generation. You're going to be the father of many nations. And what does that mean? That we are the seed of Abraham. God told Abraham, I bless those that bless you. And by me being the seed of Abraham, God will bless those that bless me. God told Abraham that I curse those that curse you. And by me being the seed of Abraham, God will curse those that curse me. God told Abraham, in a way that your feet shall tread, shall be blessed. And by me being the seed of Abraham, everywhere that my feet tread, shall be blessed. God told Abraham, don't you worry about anything, because I go before you. The land is yours. I go before you. I drive out all of your enemies. And by me being the seed of Abraham, God will go before me. He'll drive out all of my enemies. He'll make every crooked place straight. And every world place smooth. That's what it means to be the seed of Abraham. I'm a joint heir to Jesus Christ. The same benefit that Jesus the Christ have. The same benefits that I have. I'm sitting in the right hand of God the Father. Anything I ask my Father, He'll give it to me. That's what it means to be the seed. Oh. Abraham. And since I believe that some people do not fully understand that we are the seed of Abraham, and some people do not fully understand all that God has placed in the inside of us, some people walk around sad. Some people walk around defeated. Some people walk around confused. Because they do not understand all what God has put inside of us as a seed. No wonder you are always confused. No wonder you are always defeated. No wonder you're never happy because you do not realize all that God has put in the, in, in the inside of you as an AC. Yeah. However, Psalms 1, verse number 1. Psalms 1, verse number 1, it says, happy or blessed. And blessed translate in the Hebrew as happy. Happy is the man. Woo! If you want to be happy and you don't want to be sad, if you want to be happy and you do not want to be defeated, if you want to be happy and you don't want to be confused, Psalms 1 says, happy or blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. That is referring to your thoughts. Who walks not in the counsel of of the ungodly because you don't know who you are as a seed. And because you don't know who you are as a seed of Abraham. And because you don't know who you are as a child of God. And if you walk in the counsel of the ungodly, if you get counsel from ungodly people, they will tell you who you are when you are not what they say you are. They will tell you what you should do when you know you should not do what they say you should do because you are in the council. And anytime you get counseling, counseling for ungodly people, they will change the way you think. And as a man thinks, so is he. So you will begin to live a lot. You will begin to be a lot because you are in the council of the ungodly. But if you want to be happy, if you want to be blessed, Psalms 1 verse number 1 says, Blessed or happy is the man who was not in the council of the ungodly. Next he says, nor stands in the path of sinners. Mm -hmm. This is referring to influence or behavior. Behavior. And, and Psalms 1 verse number 1 says that if you don't know who you are as a child of God, and if you don't know who you are as a seed of Abraham, the Bible let us know if you stand in the path of sinners. 
Sinners will begin to change your behavior. Sinners will begin to influence you to do ungodly things. That's why he says, if you want to be happy, if you want to be blessed, if you want to see the manifestation of God upon your life, you shall not stand in the path of sinners. Because if you stand in the path of sinners, they will change your behavior. They will influence you and change your behavior. Next part of that verse, it says, happy or blessed is the man who stands or who do not sit in the seat of the scornful. That is referring to belonging. And if you want to be happy, and if you want to find out all that God has placed in the inside of you as a seed of Abraham and as a seed of God, the Bible let us know that we should not sit in the seat of the scornful. Then it's talking about belonging. And the scornful is talking about those people who are always sitting in judgment of everything and everyone. If you find yourself always judging everyone and everything, that means that you are sitting in the seat of the scornful. No wonder you cannot have any peace. No wonder you can't have any joy. Because you're too busy looking at other folks. You're too busy judging other things and other people. But if you really want to be blessed, if you really want to be happy in God, if you really, really want to understand all that God has placed in the inside of you and the inside of us, the Bible let us know that we should not sit in the seat of the scornful. For. We don't belong there. We should not be there. The Bible says, judge not, and you will not be judged. Don't be there. You don't belong there. So, Psalms 1, verse number 1, it deals with your thoughts, your behavior, and your belongings. Type that in your the comment screen. Verse 1, Psalms 1, verse number 1 deals with your thoughts your behavior, and your belonging. Mm -hmm. And it goes on. And then let us know if we want to know who we are mm -hmm. as a seed. Mm -hmm. It moves to verse number two. Yeah. It tells us what to do. Yeah. If you really want to know who you are as a seed of God, if you really want to know who you are as a seed of Abraham, if you really want to know who you are as a child of the king, verse number two tells us what to do. But his delight, his delight is in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord is referring to the Torah. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Let me deal very briefly with this thing of meditation. Because contrary to proper belief, when the Bible speaks of meditation, it is not talking about sitting in a quiet place and just having music playing and, and just listening and thinking about things. That's not meditation. When the Bible speaks of meditation, the Bible is telling us to get our word, to get the Torah, to get the Pentateuch, to get the Old Testament, to get the New Testament, get the word of God and meditate in it. Meditate means you read the word of God out loud. Not reading it to yourself, but meditation is talking about reading aloud, reading out loud. Oh, one thing about when I was in school, many of my friends, and even in college, many of my friends that like to study with me because I read out loud. I really can't read to myself because I can't really process everything that the book is talking about. But if I read it out loud and hear myself reading the word of God, I say it out in the atmosphere and it goes back to my ear. I can comprehend what I read it. And that's the same thing for the word of God. That's the same thing with the word of God. The word of God tells us to meditate in his word. And if we meditate in his word, that means read it aloud. If we read get God's word and read it out loud, it goes out in the atmosphere and we hear it and it goes back down in the Bible spirit. That's what it means to meditate in the word of God. I know you read it in your private time. And I know you read your Bible on your lunch break. But when you get by yourself in your secret closet, get the word of God. Get the law. Get the Bible. Get the Old Testament. Get the New Testament and read it out loud. And once you read it out loud, it goes back into your spirit. 
here. What does the word say? The word tells me that I'm more than a conqueror. And when I read that out loud, it feeds my inner man. What do the word say? The Lord told me that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. And when I meditate on that, read that out loud, it feeds my spirit. That's what you need to start doing. You need to start meditating on the word of God. Read it out loud so it can feed your spirit. So it can feed your inner man. Somebody shout, meditate. Yes, and then Psalms 1 verse number 3. I'm going somewhere. It tells us this. And here's the centerpiece mm -hmm. of Psalms 1. He shall be like a tree. Mm -hmm. Now, it's going to compare a righteous person to a tree. Mm -hmm. He shall be like a tree. Mm -hmm. Underline that word. Mm -hmm. Highlight that word in your Bible. Put that word in the comment box because I'm really going to deal with that because if you don't understand this about this tree, you won't understand where I'm going with the sermon. And he shall be like a tree. So Psalms 1, the author of Psalms 1, is comparing a righteous man to a tree. Mm -hmm. And remember that a tree starts as a seed. Yeah. And what do you do with a seed? You plant it. Mm -hmm. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water. Mm -hmm. I already stated that after you get a seed, a tree seed, and if you want it to grow mm -hmm. and produce, you must plant it. Mm -hmm. It's not good enough just to be a seed mm -hmm. if you're not planted. Many people know that they are a child of God, but they are not planted. No. You must be planted in God. Right. Talk about, and he shall be like a tree planted by the waters. And the Bible let us know that Jesus and God, they are the living water. Yes. Yes. So I shall be like a tree. I shall be a seed planted in God. You shall be a seed planted in God. Pastor Colors, how do I get planted in God? I just told you in the time you meditate in the word of God, you planted yourself in the word. You planted yourself in, in the word of God because in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. So the word is God and, and the Bible let us know that in a time we are planted in the word we are planted in God and God and Jesus, they are both, and the Holy Spirit, they are both living water. Yeah, yeah. So he shall be like a tree. A righteous person shall be a seed planted in God. Yeah. Now it's important to note that before a seed can grow into a tree that produces it's important to note that the seed must go through several stages. Yes. Stage number one, I already told you, um, the life cycle of a tree, <clears throat> the life cycle of a tree. Stage number one, I already talked about it, is the seed cycle. If I can say this, if you will, the seed season. And I already, I already dealt with that. That's when the seed is planted in the ground. Cycle number, uh, the next step or, or the next season, if you will, <clears throat> is the sprout season. Yeah. Th this is when the seed is planted in the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and when the seed is planted in the ground, it, it must be planted in the right environment. Wow. And when it's planted in the right environment, the environment must be the right environment to get water and sunlight. The seed must be in the right environment so it can get some water and sunlight. 
and, and got to get water and Jesus is the living water and they got to get sunlight and, and Jesus is the light of the world and got to, it must be the sea must be in the right environment to get water and sunlight water and sunlight Jesus let us know that God Jesus and the Holy Spirit is the living water and, and Jesus said that I am the light of the world so the sea must be in the right environment. And once it get water and sunlight, it sprout out underneath the ground so it can get and form roots. It must be in the right environment. Then the next season that the seed goes through, or the tree, if you will, goes through it. The first season is seed. The next season it is sprout. It is forming root. Now <clears throat> the third season is seedling season. The seedling season <clears throat> is when the seed has sprouted out and it takes the appearance, a wooden appearance. And it develops a hard stem. And it develops bark on the tree mm -hmm. to protect the tree. Wow. And the leaves begin to unfold on the stem. Mm -hmm. But it's still competing for sunlight. Mm -hmm. Because the tree still needs sunlight. Mm -hmm. But the fifth stage, the seedling stage, is the most dangerous stage. Because in this stage, the seed is more subject to die. Because diseases, pests, and fire, and drought can kill the seed. And it can be over for the tree. And somebody this morning found themselves in that season. Seedling season. It's that it's really just mean that you in survival mode. You are doing whatever it takes to survive. I mean, water is everywhere. Fire is everywhere. A drought is everywhere. I know you got the appearance as a Christian. You you are a Christian. You are a believer, but and, and you are competing for the sunshine. You're trying to reach the sunshine, but. Although you look it up, fire is around you and the water is flowing. And, and, and for some people, you find yourself in a drought. It's because you are in survival mode. You're doing whatever you can just to survive. You're doing whatever you can just to survive. You, and the truth of the matter is, you just live from day to day. And I can't take care of tomorrow because I got to worry about today. And if I worry about today, tomorrow will take. Because you are in survival mode. Yeah. And you find yourself in the season. Yeah. Season. Mm -hmm. And the next season, you would think the next season it would be the season that the tree can produce. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people would say that after I come out of this, after I come out of this, that the Lord is going to bless me. After I come out of this, that the Lord is going to bring me through. After I come out of this fire, after I come out of this storm, the Lord is really going to bless me. And I know a lot of people talk about that, but I want you to know that that's not going to happen in this stage. Uh -huh. That after you come out of the seedling stage, after you come out of seed, of the seedling season, what happened is God has to replant you. Yes. And that's the season called the sapling season. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The sapling season, it, this is the best season when the tree can be transplanted. Yes. That means <clears throat> move from one area uh -huh. and put into another area. Uh -huh. The tree cannot stay in the same place that caused it harm. Come on now. Come on. 
And many people say, oh, as I make it through this storm, as I make it through this trial, as I make it through this tribulation, I'm going to get blessed. I, the Lord is going to bless me. But the Lord told, told me to tell you that he's not going to bless you next. He's going to have to transplant you. You cannot stay in the same place that caused you harm. You cannot stay in the same area that hurt you. You cannot stay in the same place that made you cry. You cannot stay in the same place that made you give up. And what God would have to do, he would have to take you in the sapling season. And when you go to the sapling season, he would transplant you to another area. He would transplant you to another place. He would transplant you somewhere where you can produce. And that's the place that some, some of you find yourself in. God is getting ready to transplant you. God is getting ready to transplant you. He's getting ready to move you to another So he can transplant you so you can get it ready to be what God has created and called for you to be. And now, after you go through those seasons, uh -huh. the next season is you find in Psalms 1, verse number 3, mm -hmm. that brings forth its fruit. In its season, mm -hmm. that brings forth its fruit. Mm -hmm. In its season, mm -hmm. whose leaf also shall not wither, Amen. and whatever he does shall prosper. Mm -hmm. This season is called the mature season. Mm -hmm. The mature season. Is when the tree can reproduce. Yeah. I want you to know something that anything that can reproduce takes time. Uh -huh. Anything that can reproduce takes time. Yes, no, yes, no. You must grow into it. Uh -huh. You must grow into it. You must grow into it. Anything that can reproduce tea time. Yes, you have to grow into it. Yeah. Things just don't happen mm -hmm. overnight. Mm -hmm. Things just don't happen overnight. You must learn that you got to grow into this thing. Mm -hmm. you, you, you got to grow mm -hmm. into this thing. You must grow into this thing. And once you grow into this thing, this season when you begin to produce fruit mm -hmm. is called the mature season. Mm -hmm. Now you got to go through all those other stages. Uh -huh. You got to go through those other seasons. But this season that you can produce fruit yeah. is called the mature yeah. season. Yeah. Can I go deep? The difference <clears throat> in between an apple tree, mm. an orange tree, tree, and a banana tree, and us, is an apple tree can only produce one thing, right. apples. Mm -hmm. An orange tree can only produce one thing, an orange, yeah. or oranges. Yeah. A banana tree can only produce one thing, Bananas. Yeah. But the difference between an apple tree, an orange tree, banana tree, all those trees in us, mm -hmm. we can produce in more than one area. Yes. Hear me. We can produce <clears throat> in more than one area. Y'all excuse me. I've been trying to tell them I need some water and they, they can't get the hint. So excuse me. Let, let me get a small water break. Small commercial break. <clears throat> the difference in between an apple tree, an orange tree, and a banana tree, they can only produce one thing. 
but we can produce in more than one area. Yeah. Pastor Colors, what, what do you mean that we can produce more than in one area? Think about this. Let me talk about me. I am a seed. I'm a seed of Abraham. I'm a seed of God. I'm a child of God. I am a seed and inside of me I have the calling or the area to produce and pastorship. Mm -hmm. I'm a seed that's a pastor. Mm -hmm. But that's not the only thing I, or the only area I can produce in. Mm -hmm. Not only am I, am I a pastor, I'm also a husband. I can produce in that area of being a husband. I'm not only a husband, but I'm also an executive director of a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. I can produce in that area. So I can produce in more than one area. An apple tree can only produce apple. A banana tree can only produce bananas. An orange tree can only produce oranges. And they can only produce in one area. But as a child of God, as a child of the king, we can produce in more than one area. And I want you to know, people of God, that's why you have to get in the word of God. That's why you have to meditate day and night, all day and all night to find out what all God has put inside of you as a seed. And once you understand that what all God has put inside of you as a seed, you will understand that you can produce more than in one area. Amen. Amen. I need to go a little bit deeper. There will be times when you are a, there will be times that when you are in the mature season in one area, but in the seed season, in another area. Yeah. I want you to understand that. I really want to bring this out because I want to bring this out with clarity yeah. and, and give it to you like the Lord gave it to me. Hear me. There will be time that you will be in the mature or mature season in one area that you are producing in that area. But in another area in your life, you might find yourself in a seed season or the seedling season, or the sapping season, or the sprout season. Because your calling, your gifts, also operates in a cycle. Amen. I could be producing, I could be in a mature season as a pastor, but I could be in the seed season as a father. Mm. I can be producing as a husband, mm -hmm. but I can be in the sprout season as an entrepreneur. Uh -huh. I'm all, some of you will always, most of us, all of us will always be productive or always produce in at least one area. But in other areas in your life, you may not be in the mature season. You might find yourself in another season. Because your gifts, your callings, everything that God has placed in the inside of you operates in a cycle. It sees us. That's the difference in between us and an apple tree or orange tree and all those other trees is we can produce more than in one area. And since my calling as a pastor, since I started out as a seed in my mother's womb, and then by the age of 17, I began to be in the seedling stage. And then by, uh, when I did my initial sermon, I got in the sprouting stage. And now I find myself in a maturing season and in the preacher because I'm producing in that area. And since I am in the mature season in this um, calling as a pastor or as a preacher in my life, I will always be productive in that area. But in other areas in my life, 
I can be in different Amen. seasons. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And then when we mature or uh, when we go through the seasons or the different cycles in those other areas, then you can be in the mature season in different areas. Do you follow yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I want to say this, and I don't know who this is for, but I want to say this. When I was writing this sermon, the Lord revealed this to me. And I, I don't know who this point is for. And only the mature people can really handle this. There comes a point in your life that a job is more than money. Your career, your job is more about more than money. Because some people have jobs that don't pay that much, but they love their job. And then there are some people that get paid a lot of money mm -hmm. and they don't like right. their job mm -hmm. because there is a time when some believers will get to a point and you will realize and come to the realization that your job is more about the money than it pays on Thursday, mm -hmm. Friday, about weekly or monthly or weekly. Mm -hmm. And some people right now, you find yourself in this area because you don't. Your job was good at once upon a time. And it's not about money, how much you're making or how little you're making. You find yourself that you're just not comfortable on your job. You don't like your job. And I'm going to tell you what's going on. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. I'm going a little deeper. Hear me. Trees do not eat their own fruit. The fruit that a tree produces benefits other people. You don't see an apple eating an apple. You don't see an orange eating an orange. We eat the fruit that the trees produce. So the trees do not eat their own fruit. Trees do not produce to benefit themselves. Trees do not produce uh, uh, in the mature season to benefit their themselves. They benefit other people. Mm -hmm. You would know that you are blessed on your job when other people benefit from you. And the reason some people are just not comfortable on the job, their season is up, is because you have came to the realization that you're not accomplishing anything. That this job that I have is not benefiting nobody else. Oh yeah, it's benefiting you. You get a, a paycheck on Thursday or Friday, but a tree do not eat their own fruit. A tree do not produce for themselves. They produce to benefit other people. Y'all don't hear me. And you are now sitting at your desk and on your job. Or, 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 or standing up at work or on the assembly line at work or digging a hole or at work or, or flipping burgers and I'm not knocking any of those jobs because at least you have a job. I'm not knocking those jobs. But your problem is, your dilemma is you have came to the realization that I'm not benefiting anybody yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. by staying here. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting a job. I, 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 I'm getting, I'm getting a, 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 a paycheck on Friday, but I'm not accomplishing a thing. Yeah. I'm not benefiting. I'm not, nobody is benefiting from what I am doing. It's 
So what's, what's happening, Pastor, God is trying to show you that your season is up. Your season has changed as it relates to your occupation. So, so if you don't remember anything else that I said, you would know that you are a blessing. You would know that you are being productive. You would know that you are in the mature season of your life. Not only when you produce fruit, but when other folks are being blessed or benefit from the fruit that you bear. Yes, yes. That is the mature season. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in its season whose leaf shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper because I am in the mature season and in at least one area, I am in the mature season in my life. I come to tell somebody that's listening to me this morning that your season is changing. That, that your season is changing. That your season is changing. That, that your season is changing. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. The first day of fall was Tuesday and I come to tell somebody in the spirit that your season is changing. That you are about to enter into the mature season of your life. You are about to benefit. You are about to produce in certain areas of your life. You've been through many seasons. You've been you know, been through the flood. You've been planted. You've been rooted. And now you've been planted in God. And I come to tell somebody that you are about to enter the mature season of your life. I want you to look at your neighbor. And I want you to type in a comment screen. This is my mature season. 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 And I want you to get this, and I'm closing. In your mature season, you don't have to worry about anything or anyone useless stopping your productivity. Because verse number four states, the ungodly are not so, but are like the step shaft which the wind drives away. Yeah. And I want us to get this image, if you will, of corn. You know, when you get corn out of the field, mm -hmm. and what farmers used to do in the biblical days, they'd get threshing or threshed corn. That corn, they got all the trash in it, in the hay, and mm -hmm. all of that. And when the wind is blowing, what the former would do, he would get the bundle of corn, throw it up in the air, and while the wind is blowing, it will remove all those useless things. It will remove all of those things that are not wanted. It will remove those things that don't benefit the corn. And when all the trash and all the hay and all the useless things, when the wind blows it the wind, the only thing that is left is the grain. The only thing that is left, the things that really can be used. And I come to tell somebody that when you enter into the mature season, you don't have to worry about anybody stopping your productivity. You don't have to worry about anything. And I'm referring to spirits. You don't have to worry, uh, worry about any spirit stopping you. Because when the wind blow, when the wind of God blow, when the Holy Spirit blow, when the Holy Spirit breathes on you, when the Holy Spirit blow on you, it will remove all those husks. It will remove all those things that are not wrong. It will remove all Remove all those things that don't benefit you. Because verse number four, let us know that the ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft, which the wind, which the wind, the wind, the wind, the wind of the Holy Spirit, the wind of God will drive away. 
devil that are trying to stop you in your mature season. You don't have to worry about them because verse number five and six, there is no therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the ways of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You don't have to worry about the ungodly. You don't have to worry about the spirits that's trying to stop you. You don't have to worry about the people that's trying to hinder you. Because God is going to let them perish. God is going to let them drown. Come in the Egyptian. The Lord told Moses and the Israelites, the enemies, refer to the Egyptians. That you see today. You won't see them no more. And I've come to tell somebody, since you are in your mature season, the enemies, the spirits, and the people that you see today, you won't see them no more because the ungodly shall perish. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you look at your neighbor or type in the comment stream and tell somebody, this is my mature season. My season has changed. My season has changed. My season has changed. I'm getting ready to step into my mature season. I'm getting ready to step in my mature season. My season has changed. Whatever I do shall prosper. Right, 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 
This is my mature season. This is my mature season. That I'm getting ready in, in, in at least one area of my life. I'm getting ready to produce. And I'm not going to be the only one producing. I believe somebody else looking at me online feels this prophet of word like I do. And I believe we get ready to produce in at least one area. Because whatever we do, shall prosper. And you're getting ready to produce in at least one area. But understand, there might be other areas of your life that you might be in other stages in. But I'm getting ready to prosper in at least one area. Before you click off that string, I know you're still praising them and lifting your hands. But before we end the service, I don't want you to close out. I don't, don't click off that string. Don't, don't click off that string. I don't want you to, don't, don't click off. Don't, 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 you, don't you click off. Don't you leave me yet. Because if you believe this is your season, Nothing won't grow if you don't plant a seed. From nothing comes nothing. But if you plant a seed, if you, you plant a seed, before you click off, I, I know many of y'all view me every week and, and, and you never plant a seed. And you never plant a seed. But before you click off, you don't understand that the seed that you have can bring forth your maturity. you click on. I don't care how small your seed is. Don't despise small beginning. Because when the Lord rejoice to see the word begin. Before you click on, before you click on, the ways to give are on your screen. And it's on there. And I want you to get off that the Holy Spirit is pulling at something here. I want you to give an offer to this ministry. Give an offer to this ministry. Let's see. You can give on Gimify. Find True Friendship Church in Lincoln or True Friendship Church in Elberton. Don't you close out. Don't, the Holy Spirit is pulling you. This is your time to plant a seed. Or you give on Cash App. I want you to plan. You don't hear this kind of word without planning. God has brought Shunday to the most side. God has brought you clarity about what season you in or what season you're about to enter. Don't you close. Don't you, don't you, don't you get off of here without giving. And here at True First Year Church, we do something else. We have seed offering. And this is when people bless the man of God, which is your street. And it is, it's not about the pastor getting money, but at True Friendship Church, we understand the principle that if you give, you should receive a profit reward. We understand the principle that it's not me preaching, but it's the Holy Spirit preaching through me. And, and, and if, if they continue to walk and hear words and plant seeds in their pastor's life, and I don't want you to close out. Without planting a seed, it's not about me, but it's about the anointing. The anointing that God has placed on my life. Without God, I'm not. Without the anointing, the praise of God, I'm nothing. And before you close, I want you to sow into my life. My cash app information is on the screen right now. I want you to sow. Every week, by the grace of God, I hear from heaven and bring you words. Sometimes God interrupts my day to speak to me concerning you or to minister to you for the week. And before, before, before you close, it's two ways or two things, areas you need to sow in. It's your true friendship church, cash out, or give a five. That's one area. In another area you need to sow in is yours truly. Yes. It's not about money because God has blessed me when people didn't even give. Mm -hmm. 
But I have seen people, people, and people can testify that they come and they sow into my life fifty dollars, some a hundred dollars, some twenty dollars, and they come back the next week, Pastor. I, I got a testimony by sowing into your life. God gave me that triple what I gave you. God, God opened this door in my finances. God opened this door in my career. Don't you close out without sowing into true friendship church and into the anointing that God has placed on my life. Wherever you are. Before we close out, I want you to sow. Oh, we have heard from heaven. I said, we have heard from heaven. You have received clarity concerning your life. Hallelujah. And you know what God is getting ready to do. He's getting ready to bring you into this mature season. But, but now, from never comes never. Nothing won't happen if you don't plan to see. You got to plan to see. Hallelujah. I still feel the praise. The mature season. Come on, take me out, Jeremy. Thank <laughs> you.